Hi, in this video we'll look at an example AMC question on prime decomposition and the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Now this problem is good because it involves most of the prime decomposition skills you'll need in the AMC without dragging in a lot of unrelated stuff. So uh, let's see what we have. Let x and y be positive integers such that 7x to the 5th is equal to 11y to the 13th. The minimum possible value of x has the prime factorization a to the c times b to the d. What is the sum a through d? Now, these multiple variables here are a bit complicated for my brain, so I like to look at something simpler to get a feel for the problem. Now, as I look at this equation up here, I notice that the variable x needs to pick up factors of 11, and the variable y needs to pick up factors of 7. So let me try this as a, as a start. Let me try to look at x equaling 11 to some power, say, m, and uh, y equal to 7 to some power, say, n. And let me substitute that back in here and see what I can learn. So substituting that back in, I find that 7 times 11 to the m to the fifth power is equal to... 11 times 7 to the n to the 13th power. And let me bring these uh, exponents down in through the parentheses. And I find that uh, 7 times 11 to the 5m is equal to 11 times 7 to the 13th n. And now, since we have uh, prime decomposition on both sides of this equation, uh, we can uh, match up the exponents of the different prime factors. So we know that 5m has to match up with uh, the exponent on 11 on the side, and 13n has to match up with the exponent of 1 on the left side. And at that point, we sort of notice we can't get this to work. Uh, there's no way to have 5m equal 1. There's no way for 13n to equal 1 since m and n are both uh, positive integers. So at that point, we sort of get a clue here that it looks like x also needs to include some factors of 7 to give us a little more flexibility in this equation. So let's write that in. So that's times 7 to some exponent. Don't know what it is. And it's probably a good guess that uh, we also have to put y to include some factors of 11. So times 11 to some exponent there. So let's give that a try now. Let's try to uh, expand this a little bit and let x equal 7 to some exponent c, kind of what they suggest up here, times 11 to some exponent d. And let's let y equal kind of the same form, but now with different exponents. So m and n not related to the first m and m. And let's plug that into this uh, equation up to the right here, and we find that 7 times 7c, 11d to the fifth, is equal to m11n to the thirteenth. Let's bring these exponents down in through the parentheses. We find that 7 to the 5c plus 1, 11 to the 5d, is equal to 7 to the 13m, uh, 11 to the 13n plus 1. So here again, we can uh, match up the exponents. So we know that uh, this exponent has to match up with this exponent, and this exponent has to match up with this exponent. And that gives us uh, two equations now. We have 5c plus 1 is equal to 13m, and 5d is equal to 13n plus 1. Now, what we have here are two linear integer equations, and in general, these are a pain to solve, but in this problem, we're just looking for the smallest solution, and that's usually easy, so we'll just poke at these with a little trial and error. So in the first equation, we're trying to find some value of m 
that is uh, a multiple of 5 plus 1. So let's try m equals 1, that's 13. No, that doesn't quite work. Um, let's try m equals 2, that's 26. Ooh, that does work. So for m equals 2, we have this equal to 26, and that causes c to equal 5. Now here we're trying to find some multiple of 13 such that when you add 1, you have a multiple of 5. So let's try 1, 13 plus 1 is 14, no, 2, 26 plus 1, 27, no, n equals 3 times 13 is 39 plus 1. Okay, that does work. And that leads to a value of d equals 8. So great, looks like we've solved for c and d. Uh, a and b are the, uh, the bases of x, 7 and 11. So we have everything we need. So that's 7 plus 11 plus 5 plus 8. Uh, that's 18 plus 8 is uh, 26 plus 5 is 31. So that's choice B, 31. So there you have it, a good example of a prime decomposition problem. And I'll see you at the next video. Bye-bye.